Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Wednesday, March the 20th, 2024. Happy Equinox! Yes, the Sun is crossing the celestial equator and by definition, as it moves northwards from south to north, uh, it moves uh, onto the Aries point. So it's a very important time. Uh, It's like a gateway has opened at the time of the equinox. Um, At that point, the precise point where the sun crosses the, um, um, the celestial equator, yeah, something has opened. The, the paths of the cosmos are amongst us and we get an idea perhaps about what the next three months are going to be like between now and the solstice. Of course, we have this great northern hemisphere bias. We call it the spring equinox because it's the beginning of the spring. Of course, in Australia and New Zealand, southern hemisphere, it's the beginning of the autumn. Um, and, uh, you know, we call it the... Uh, the summer solstice again northern hemisphere bias it's it's, it's sort of winter in uh, the southern hemisphere so i'm i'm very aware aware of that uh, but yeah wherever you are um happy equinox and because it's the equinox in this video i want to look at the aries point it is a key point in every chart we should always look at the aries point in the charts we look at and Aries point is simply zero degrees Aries in our chart. Everyone has got a zero degrees Aries in their chart. It's going to be in different houses, um, have um, different aspects, but we've all got a zero, zero degrees Aries. And I think it's, it's often forgotten about. Um, but uh, in the Hamburg School, um, founded by Alfred Witter at the beginning of the uh, 20th century, the Aries point was just as important as the ascendant or the nodes or sun and the moon. So, um, yeah, in this video, um, I do want to look at the Aries point and I'm going to look at a few charts of famous people to illustrate, you know, the famous, the, sorry, to, to illustrate the Aries point at work. And perhaps if you look at that, that part of a video, you might get some hints about how to use the Aries point in your own work. So in that sense, there's going to be a bit of a tutorial element um, to this um, video um, at the end. But before I do that, uh, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today, which is uh, Wednesday, March the 20th, um, 2024. Now, I've got some people up there Macron, Napoleon, Churchill, Robert Oppenheimer. And I'm going to look at their charts later in this video in terms of their Aries point and, you know, what I think about it and what 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 is aspecting their Aries point. Um, but looking at the chart for today, um, which is March the 20th, 2024, I've set the chart for noon. Obviously, the main thing going on today is that the sun is moving into Aries. That is a big change. You know, it's been in Pisces, it's now now in Aries. And it's a cardinal point, um, zero degrees Aries. And so we might experience a big change. You know, we've had all this, you know, we've had the sun in Pisces. Um, this was in a water sign. And... Uh, there might have been an emphasis on emotion, responding, um, how we pick up on what's going on around us. Um, you know, the water signs are, are often called um, the mute signs traditionally. Um, reason being that, uh, you know, Pisces is ruled by fish and by and large fish don't make much noise. Likewise, Scorpios are ruled by, you know, the scorpion again doesn't make much noise cancer the crab so the water signs are often called the mute signs or not, i don't say often certainly it's not, no they're not often called the mute signs they're traditionally called the mute signs so when the sun moves out of a mute sign uh, into aries yeah we get more noise perhaps um 
people have got things to say, uh, things to do, and it's more action orientated, um, and decisions take place in a way that's much faster. You know, Aries makes makes fast decisions based on just a knowledge about the way things are. So that's that, that's one thing going on, main thing going on. Also, we can see that the moon is in Leo. Um, and, you know, wherever, whatever your time zone, moon fairly and squarely in this sign. And, you know, that means that we've got the sun and the moon in far signs. Two, the two the lights, um, the two most important bodies in the heavens uh, are both in far signs. So that's very energetic. Um, it's, it, it sort of emphasizes the point that it is all about um, action and it's about it's about intuition um, in the sort of a Jungian sense of the word intuition. Intuition having just an immediate sense of what is right, um, the way things are, just immediate knowledge. We know something. We know it's the case. We, we don't have to work it out. We don't have to believe. We just know. And so that's, um, that's the moon in Leo. Though I should point out that the moon in Leo can be a little fragile. I mean, the moon actually has no dignity in Leo. All things being equal, okay, it can sometimes be in mutual reception, but it's not a great place for um, the moon simply because the moon is, um, you know, it's a feminine sign, it's a receptive sign, and Leo is, the sign Leo is just too hot. It just burns up, burn thing, burns, thing, burns things up. Uh, so... That's perhaps a problem with the moon in Leo. Having said that, the sun is in Aries, and so I think that provides quite a lot of um, support for it. So that's the main thing going on. There's not actually um, very many lunar aspects today. Um, moon is uh, just in Leo. Um, you can see that the moon is starting to make um, a square to Jupiter, but really that would be right at the end of the day, and even then you'd have to be in the Americas. So the moon is not particularly active. Um, you know, it's made in opposition to Pluto, but it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's not really doing much, the moon. And so today, maybe um, there may be a sense in which... Um, we know we have ideas, there are things we want to do, um, but actually making them happen um, may be hard work. Uh, so there could be perhaps a lot of talking, a lot of thinking, um, a lot of excitement, but actually see, turning theory into practice um, could be quite difficult. Um, possibly, arguably, the main aspect, one of the main aspects today is a decile between Mercury and Saturn. Um, there is, uh, there's Saturn and there is Mercury. See, Mercury and Saturn, 36 degrees apart. Um, tenth of the circle, as I say about deciles, it's a struggle to create a particular style. Mercury, Decal, Saturn. Um, we're struggling to get our ideas together. I'm not saying it's it's a bad thing to be struggling to get our ideas together. We're trying to give the impression that we're organized people. Um, we're together. Um, we're speaking properly. Um, our, our words um, have great weight. At least they we want our words to have great weight. So we might feel we have to make a a special effort to sound weighty and to sound serious. So um, you know that that small aspect, Mercury, Dec Decal, Saturn, may actually be um, the main aspect for today, which which is a bit crazy. Um, as far as midpoints are concerned. Um, Jupiter is uh, square the Mars Pluto midpoint. Um, there is there is Mars, um, there's Pluto. You can see them. So the Jupiter, 
the Jupiter Pluto um, midpoint is uh, sorry Mars Pluto midpoint is around 15 degrees Aquarius and there's Jupiter and when we see Jupiter on the Mars Pluto midpoint um, actually that is a really big deal and let me explain why and this kind of links into my subject matter um, for this video you will notice that at midday um, New York time Jupiter is at 15 zero minutes Taurus now anything at 15 degrees of the fixed signs is in an important place because it is semi-square the Aries point or perhaps sesquiquadrate the Aries point it's 45 degrees from the Aries point there's Jupiter 45 degrees from the Aries point uh, 45 degrees is an important angle it's one eighth of the circle um, it's um, um, it's half a square so in astrology a square is 90 degrees a semi-square is 45 degrees it's strongly configured with the Aries point so that Jupiter and this Aries the Aries point they are both on the Mars Pluto midpoint um, yeah this is a big deal and you know the Mars the Mars Pluto pair is about extreme force um, it's about the desire to make something happen, and so when Jupiter is semi is is square the Mars Pluto midpoint, especially if it's um, uh, if it's forty five degrees from the Aries point, someone wants to use a lot of force, a huge amount of force, um, and we have to be careful about people throwing their weight around. Um, some you know some people really are on a power trip they they want to get results and they don't care who gets hurt in the process so do be wary of that now the aries point um is tied up with this and um i just wanted to read you what vita says about the mars pluto midpoint um so this is Alfred Vitter's book, uh, Rules for Planetary Pictures. Um, it is available. You can buy it. Um, I, I think it's one of the most important books, uh, astro astrology books there is. Um, uh, certainly if you're into midpoints, it's, it really is a book one should really try to get hold of. So the Mars-Pluto midpoint, he, you know, Vitter says it is the principle of... Um, well, he says organization and planning. I think that is a bit of an understatement. I think Mars Pluto is um, the principle of considerable power. Vitter says about Jupiter on the um, Aries, on the Mars Pluto midpoint, is the plan is a success and brings good fortune and happiness. Now, I think that is too positive, but you should perhaps take what Vitter says. If you want to be positive, here is a suggestion. It's about successful planning, but you can execute a plan. Then Aries on the Mars-Pluto midpoint plans in an organization which concern the public, um, organizing, supervising the general work. So um, I would kind of disagree with Vita there um, on with Aries and Jupiter on the Mars-Pluto midpoint. I would see it as being about the exercise of enormous power. Um, perhaps in quite an unethical way. A vita is more about um, more about successful plans. So, you know, you can consider that and see how it works for today. So, but that um, Jupiter on the Mars-Pluto midpoint, yeah, it really is um, the most important thing um, going on today, I suppose. I suppose, and it's certainly more important than Mercury, Decile, Saturn. Um, it is a big deal. Um, but before I look at the, the 12 signs, I just want to quickly look at the heliocentric situation today. Um, uh, this is the positions of the planets from a perspective of the sun. So what we're looking at there is the positions of the planets from a perspective of putting the, uh, from the 
putting the Earth in the centre of the solar system, and this is a heliocentric perspective. Um, so you can see that the Earth has just moved into Libra, because the Earth, from a heliocentric perspective, is always exactly opposite the Sun. So the Earth has moved into Libra, and um, the Earth is trine Pluto. Um, so Earth trine Pluto. Um, we can we might feel that uh, it sort of echoes um, you know this sort of Jupiter on a Mars Pluto midpoint. It's about force. Uh, it's about something which appears trivial actually having a huge impact. Um, so we mustn't discount anything. It might Something might seem small, trivial, but it can have a big influence. And uh, yeah, the general principle of transformation um, is important today. So, and it happens down here on Earth. Is it going to affect us personally? Not necessarily. It might just be something about... Um, the world in general okay so that's uh that's the positions of the planets uh heliocentrically i'm not saying it's particularly dramatic i just think it's important to just look at the positions of the, the heliocentric positions of the planets every day just just to get an idea about what is happening um so let's uh, uh go back to the uh regular earth center chart so uh now i'm going to give you my forecasts for the 12 signs for today which is wednesday march the 20th 2024 aries the sun moves into your sign uh it's a very important um time for you um if you're looking at these signs from a perspective of your sun sign, as, as some people are, your birthday season has started. So your, birth, your birthday is going to be soon. Um, it's a time when you are very into yourself and what you can achieve. And you, you may feel that uh, a period of preparation um, is finally over. You know, this period of preparation may have been somewhat frustrating. Um, there have just been boring stuff to do, sort of plans, um, you know, and, and plans which may not always have worked well. And perhaps you've also felt that, you know, things have been over-emotional. Um, but now you're ready and uh, you're feeling um, very optimistic, I hope, um, about the future and that has a help by the fact that uh, the moon is in um, moon's in leo so it's it's great that the sun and the moon are both in far signs you know you are a far sign and you need fire to keep you going and with with the sun and the moon in far in, a, in far signs you feel that you're in an environment which is um, broadly sympathetic to your needs you, you know, you need uh, you, you need to have people around you who understand you, um, who understand your need for action. And, you know, you don't really want people asking too many questions. Uh, I mean, it's not that you're trying to hide anything, but if people are asking too many questions, um, you get nothing done. <laughs> that that is the problem. Um but perhaps there are fewer questions now and fewer sort of vague blocks being put up, you know, people emotionally resisting you. And, you know, you can feel something's wrong, but it just doesn't work out. But now it's changed. Um, and in the process, um, I think that it is um, very important um, that uh, you are focused on yourself and what you can do it's not what other people can do it's what you can do and uh, in that sense I don't think you should be ashamed of being a little bit arrogant no I mean I don't mean over the top arrogant but just having a broad sense that you know what you're doing and perhaps you know what you're doing better than other people um, 
I think that is okay. And, uh, you know, while you're going about your daily business today, uh, it is very important that you are optimistic. You know, there may be people and situations which in the past have let you down. Um, it may not have been their fault. Um, they just might not have been in the right frame of mind. Uh, they weren't in the right mood. But give people another chance. Things really have changed and you have the capacity to create change. You can sort of make people feel happier um, about themselves um, and their prospects and you can actually present um, a vision of the future which um, sounds very appealing. Uh, so overall, Aries, um, I'm not going to talk too much uh, because it's a day when um, you know the emphasis should be on action and fire and you um, doing what you need to do. So overall, Aries, looks good. Uh, make the most of it. Taurus, you may feel, Taurus, that you need to take a step back. Um, it may just feel a little bit overwhelming today. Um, you know, you can feel that things really have changed. Um, that um, you know, the people, people out there are, you know, they're looking for action. Um, they want movement. Uh, and you're not quite ready for it. Uh, and, you know, that's okay. Uh, just accept the world the way it is, and it's okay to take things slowly. But that doesn't mean to say that you have to be completely negative. And I'm certainly not advocating that you be lazy. Uh, far from it. Uh, remember, Jupiter has been in your sign. Jupiter's been in Taurus since May. Jupiter today is exactly in the middle of Taurus. Uh, by, by space, not by time. Jupiter's starting to, to get to get to get to you know Jupiter's starting to go faster and faster now. Jupiter is um, in a few months' time. Jupiter's going to be out of Taurus, but okay, it seems you're in the middle of it, and that means that this broad time you're in is is fortunate. Uh, it's a time when you know. You can find out who you are and you can you can ground your optimism and your all your, your ideas for the future. You can turn them into reality. But um, you don't want to be you don't want to be lazy about it. Uh, as I said, it's not a day to be lazy. And today, Jupiter, while moving through Taurus, um, is making an, an exact semi-square to the Aries point. It's also making a, a square to the Mars-Pluto midpoint. And so I would suggest, Taurus, that you work out how you are going to achieve what you want to achieve. Start thinking about it. Um, you are going to get insights. You know, remember, Taurus, today is the... Vernal is a vernal equinox, a spring equinox. If you're in the northern hemisphere, um, it's still the equinox. Um, it's a time of great power. It's a time when that Jupiter in Taurus is empowered. It's particularly prominent. So whatever you're doing today, Taurus, and whatever you see, whatever you experience, um, think how it reflects back on you and how it reflects back on 
your ambitions for the future. And uh, don't be stubborn. Um, if you're stubborn, you're not going to get anywhere. You've got to be open to possibilities. Um, okay, you've got to be constant and you've got to be fixed in your resolve to get things done. Um, so that's really how you should probably approach the day. Yeah, you don't have to be in the center of things. I don't think it's going to be good for you to be in the center of things. But you have to have your eyes open and you have to be aware um, that the means of achieving your ambitions, particularly the, not so much the ambitions of a material nature, but more the ambitions of a sort of an inspirational and spiritual nature, the means of achieving your, your ambitions are right in front of you. It's all there for you. And I think if you're honest with yourself, you'll, you'll understand exactly um, what needs to be done. It's going to be tough when you realize what needs to be done, but uh, at least you have an opportunity to see the path ahead. Gemini. The sun moves into Aries today. And uh, from a Gemini perspective... That's probably quite a good thing. Um, it does mean that you can turn over um, a new leaf um, in terms of your um, social life, perhaps. So, you know, you're a Gemini and, you know, Geminis get bored of people. Uh, they do. Uh, it, it's true. Um, you reach a point where you've, you've heard what someone said before. You know, when, you, when you've reached that stage, Gemini, uh, when you hear someone repeating it themselves, you just know that maybe it's kind of over, isn't it? You get bored of people. Yeah, it happens. Um, and perhaps that is what, has, what is happening or has happened. But if you get bored of people, then you need to find new people. Um, and the sun is... Uh, moving into Aries and I think that the sun moving into Aries is an opportunity for you to um, link up with new people um, you know, I'm talking primarily about contacts friends you know not necessarily close one-to-one -one partnerships um, but you know do consider your social life and where it's going and uh, what changes um, need to be made. And, you know, maybe, Gemini, if, if, if your social life is important, you, ask, you need to ask yourself, why? What's the point? You know, what is the point in having a social life? What is it trying to achieve? What are you trying to get from it? And uh, I think that is certainly um, something that you do need to consider. There is another aspect today, or... It's not really, well, the sun moving into Aries is not really an aspect, is it? It's just something that's that's happening. Um, the, there is an aspect today which, Gemini, you do need to consider, and that is a decile between Mercury and Saturn. So Mercury is your ruler. So if we want to understand what's going on in Gemini land, we have to consider what's happening to Mercury. And so Mercury is... Um, yeah, Mercury is uh, is um, making this this decile to um, Saturn, and that means that many Gemini's are going to feel that they need to be more serious. Um, you're going to make a special effort to be serious, and you want, you're perhaps going to be want to have a serious style. Um, you're going to be really thinking about what words you're using when you're in conversation, um, and you know when you're, um, you know when you're um, writing emails, letters, text messages. You may be putting more thought into your words than usual. You're going to be struggling to give the impression that you are a serious person, um, that you're not just just doing something that's trivial of no ultimate meaning so 
know, it could be a bit of a struggle, but it's probably a good thing, I think. And there's nothing wrong with a bit of seriousness today. Certainly, um, certainly won't do you any harm. Um, as far as um, relationships are concerned, um, I suppose it's worth noting that Jupiter is exactly semi-square the Aries point. So in the Gemini, in the Gemini chart, Jupiter rules Sagittarius, uh, which is your um, um, which is your opposite sign. So Jupiter semi-square the Aries point um, means that some of the people around you may be quite larger than life um, and their influence may be surprising and you shouldn't be overwhelmed by people who are larger than life um, you know they might you know you might feel a bit you know you might feel um annoyed but in some ways someone else is super appears to be superior to you or knows more than you or gets more attention than you but don't be annoyed um in fact you can benefit from larger than life people you sh you shouldn't you shouldn't feel that you're um being um being neglected let people have their say uh particularly if those people are close to you let people get all the attention it's it's okay. Um, um, in the end, I th yeah. In the end, I think you will um, benefit from the situation. Finally, I should point out that um, although communication is going to be important to you today, um, don't be surprised if the messages you send out, however you send these messages out don't get an immediate reply. And it's also possible that a message you send today is not, um, it's just not reciprocated at all. And that is, shouldn't reflect on the person you're sending it to. It's just, it's not a very good day for action in terms of seeing the an immediate result and so if you do send messages today and you don't get a response then maybe you're just going to have to resend that message um, but it shouldn't bother you and it's it's certainly nothing for you to get upset or offended about cancer the moon does moon rules cancer and so um i have to say cancer that uh the moon is actually not in a great position um, i mean it's not in a disastrous position uh, but you know it's in leo you know it, moon doesn't really have any dignity in leo um it's not really making any aspects. As I said, you know, the moon is starting to make a square aspect to Jupiter, but it's not really there yet. Um, so, Cancer, you just might feel that it's just difficult to get anything done. And you may not want to get anything done because the effort to get, the effort to get things done could just be... Um, too much but that doesn't mean to say uh, that something important hasn't happened something actually very important has happened and and is happening because you know today the sun moves into Aries um, okay it could have been last night if you're in the, or if you're in the Americas um, so you are you are a cancerian cancer is a cardinal sign the sun has just moved into a cardinal sign aries um in general this is a time you know over the next month where you need to be prominent um 
where you can really make an impact um, in society, in the world in which you live, um, organizationally. Um, perhaps if you're working at work in your career and business, you can make things happen. Um, because, you know, the sun moving into Aries, the sun is exalted in Aries. Um, so, yes, y y it, it's important to be noticed, you know, over the next few weeks. It's just that today um, you may not be able to see that. Um, things may just feel a bit, um, yeah, a bit overwhelming. Um, you can't, you don't really want to um, get things together. Um, but I think it's just important that you're able to, th to see through your negativity. Um, so don't take things to heart. Um, don't assume that any negativity or, or reticence on your part is here to stay. I, I think it may just be that you know, there, there has been a sign change, sun moving from Pisces to, to, Ari, to Aries. It's been a bit destabilizing for you. And you just need to get your bearings. And that's really, that's all, that, that's all there is. That's all there is to it. Um, so what you see today is, is not typical um, for, the, for the next, I don't know, the next four months. Uh, sorry, next three months. Sorry, what am I talking about? It's not typical for the next month, next four weeks. That's sorry. Um, and, you know, you might feel one, one, one thing that might bother you, I don't know, is, is money. Money might bother you. I mean, the moon is in Leo. You might be thinking about money, perhaps because there's, you feel there's nothing else to think about. And uh, you, you might perhaps be worrying that you don't have enough money, but perhaps you... You know, there aren't ways of making extra money. And, um, you know, it seems that other people are better prepared than you. Um, don't worry about it, Cancer. It'll pass. Leo. It's a uh, great time for Leos. Sun's gone into Aries. Um, you are a far sign. And the moon is in your sign. Um, so you probably feel um, that uh, things are starting to align for you. Um, you, know, you know, the sun is your, is your ruler. And this sign change from Pisces into Aries... Um, is is quite massive. Um, it everything uh, everything has changed. You know, Sun in Pisces can be um, you know fairly uh, uh, up in the air, oversensitive, uh, people being unreliable, uh, difficult to know what's going on. Then suddenly, the Sun, your ruler, moves into Aries, uh, the cardinal point. Um, also, uh, the sun is exalted in Aries. Um, so, you are in a strong position. Um, you know, of all the 12 signs, you're probably in perhaps the strongest position. Okay, Aries is, if you're in Aries, you're in also in a pretty strong position, but things are looking good for you. And, as I said, the moon is now definitely in Leo. It doesn't matter what your time zone is, the moon is in Leo. So, you're getting the action you need. You're getting the sympathy and support that you need. Um, it's a world that understands and appreciates you. Uh, so if in the past you have put things off, you felt it wasn't the right time, no more excuses. Um, now it really is um, the right time. And you are now being challenged uh, to go above and beyond yourself. This challenge comes from a 45 degree aspect uh, between uh, the sun and Jupiter. So sun is your ruler. Jupiter is the planet of 
and optimism and expansion. And at the moment, Jupiter is in Taurus, which from a, a Leo perspective is a sign that is very um, out there. It's a sign that's connected with the world out there. Um, perhaps um, it's connected with... Um, career, status, um, how people are seeing you and the challenge is to really move things, move things on and make the absolute most of everything um, and, and, you know, making, making absolutely sure that people, people can see you and people know what you're about and perhaps it's a time to be uh, something of a leader, uh, if that's appropriate, if you want leadership, now is the time to to give yourself that kind of role. It, it's going to be a bit of a struggle, um, but not a struggle you can't handle. Um, I think uh, I think you definitely have it. Um, so there's a challenge there. Um, I, I feel that you are really. I do really feel that you're up to this challenge. I should also point out that um you know leo is a fixed sign and leos can be a bit set in their ways and leos can you know take the view that they're right about most things um i would advocate a little more flexibility now not just now but over the next few weeks but i think as the sun moves into aries i think the change is now upon you um you do have to consider other possibilities, alternative approaches. You haven't got all the answers. And if you want to be truly fulfilled and successful, you do have to consider alternative approaches. So be open to what people are telling you. Be open to new ideas. You might not like those ideas. These ideas might be very challenging, but they're ideas you at least need to take into consideration. You can reject them, but firstly, you need to understand what it's about. And it just may be that some of the, you know, the way you're working, the way you're functioning is just a little bit out of date and needs to be updated um, in the light of new ideas and new ways of doing things. Virgo. Uh, Virgo, it's a time when you're feeling um, perhaps a little bit out of sorts to begin with. Um, you know, the sun is changing signs. You know, the sun is sort of out of, moving out of Pisces. Um, you know, Pisces is your opposite sign and the sun is now moving into Aries. Um, from And from a Virgo perspective, that may add to your sense of you know introspection um just a feeling that uh you know there are things that need to be thought about and you're not really ready to um uh tell people what's on your mind i mean mercury is already it's been in aries for some time so you've now got sun and mercury in aries um and you know if, in the Virgo chart, you know, Aries is a bit of a an intense sign uh, where you're not really in the mood for, for telling people um, what's on your mind. I mean, that is, you know, the negative way of looking at it. And, you know, Moon also, Moon is also in Leo. And, you know, Leo is a sign just before Virgo. And that adds to the feeling of... Um, introspection but there is certainly a silver lining here and the silver lining is goes like this is that at the moment um, Virgos can actually be developing a real sense of self you know who you are very important to know who you are you know, what is you and what is other people um, are you living out someone else's life or are you living out your own life? It's important that you live out your own life. And 
this feeling of introspection you're experiencing at the moment is quite positive because actually it allows you to create some distance between yourself and others um, not just physical distance but emotional distance and just becoming aware of your boundaries and while all that is happening you can focus on the development of some of your skills um, skills that might relate to art or business or creativity there's something you need to be working on right now that that is um, very creative uh, as I said it could be business music art it's up to you depends on you depends on your circumstance um, but you've got you've got the space in which to work on your skills and it won't last forever so perhaps you should um, be appreciative of an opportunity you have been given you've been given an opportunity to um, you know step off the um, the whirling roundabout of life just for a just perhaps for a few days days and to just work on yourself no pressure and um, discover new things about what you can do and also discover new things about what you can't do I mean it's all about um, you know divide you know sorting out the wheat from the chaff you know what is irrelevant what is what's just projections from other people getting rid of that and what you've got left with is just who you are and what you can do and really that's it um i think it's quite simple um so you've got to cut through any negativity you might feel and realize that you've been given a major opportunity to find yourself Libra, you have a certain sense of excitement today. Um, you, you, you believe that uh, things can happen. Um, you're not quite sure how they're going to happen or where they're going to happen, but you just feel that, that something's, well, something is brewing. And... I think you may be right but if you want excitement if you want uh, sudden change it may be that you have to take responsibility for it yourself Um, you yourself may be the agent of change and I know that's not how Libra likes to do things very often you know Libra likes to be aware of what is going on around them you know be being aware of other people's sensibilities not not trying to rock the boat uh, but today it's perhaps down to you um, to move things along and perhaps do something that no one is expecting and there are certainly i think going to be you know quite a lot of people to um deal with i mean after all today is the um is the equinox when the sun moves into aries aries is your opposite sign aries is a sign that's um very connected with the other with other people and you know over the next few weeks um as the sun moves through aries i this you know this is where you should be going you should be considering all the people around you the people that can have an impact on your life and you should be kind of um, embracing it not least because the north node you know north, the north node is your direction it's a direction you should be going in that's in aries as well so think about aries the, the whole symbolism of the sign aries um, aries is about action it's about taking the initiative um, this is all about you and what you should be doing and initiative is a way of of taking yourself out of the past and it's an initiative 
but it's not just a solo initiative. Um, it's an initiative that aligns with everything around you. It, it aligns with the people in your with the, with the, with the many people in your life, and so perhaps it's an initiative you take, yeah, with with others. But it's all about going forward. It's all about that action going forward, and um, so r- really. Uh, Libra, it's it's not uh, certainly not a time to for, to be doing nothing, and it's not a time to just taking the view that well let other people um, let other people take the action. There's a temptation to do that. I think I think it's a big temptation to just just um, sit back and see what other people have to say and um, not comment. It's always that temptation, particularly if you're a Libra. But uh, you know, I'm confident that you are going to be able to resist that temptation and navigate for yourself um, a, a, navigate yourself a position where you are with people and where you are taking the initiative and where you are having um, having ideas. But don't be fooled by short-term trends. Um, today, for example, um, you are actually feeling quite sociable, but at the same time, you might think that uh, other people aren't up to it. You know, when you interact with people today, um, yeah, you just feel that they're not really pulling out weight. Um, that it's just difficult to get anyone to commit to anything. And that might annoy you. And you might think, wow, things are not changing for the better, they're changing for the worse. Don't worry, this is just today. You know, we've just had, you know, it's it's the equinox, people are getting used to a changing situation. Um, What you see today, and particularly in terms of what you see today in terms of other people's behavior is not typical. Uh, it's just it's just a changeover. It's just um, people are, are reticent and maybe even a bit unreliable because they don't know what's going on. They're still getting used to things, but don't worry, things will sort themselves out um, very soon. Scorpio, you probably feel um, that... Um, Things are a bit up in the air today. I mean, that's not surprising, is it? I mean, Scorpio uh, is um, a pretty sensitive sign, all things being equal. And so when you have um, the equinox, uh, Scorpio can, in the short term, sort of be all over the place, you know, not knowing what to do, uh, not knowing how to handle uh a, a changing situation that uh, it's just important that you don't panic and you don't spend too long trying to adjust uh sure things are changing but you can't you can't adjust ever yeah i know you're a fixed sign fixed signs do find it difficult to adjust but you know just accept it um you know the sun has crossed the celestial equator things are different um, uh, and, the, and the sooner you get back into your stride, the better. Um, you know, there are things that absolutely need to be done, uh, and you need to you need to get going on it. Like you know, right now, uh, the sooner they're out of the way, the better. Um, um, it may be, you know, I suppose if you're in a north if if you're in a northern hemisphere, uh, it's the beginning of spring. Uh, then it's a springs, you know, spring clean is required. Maybe um, not necessarily a spring cleaning of physical objects and you know dust and that kind of thing. Maybe an emotional spring cleaning, a spring cleaning uh, of all the psychic garbage that has been collecting over the last few months, maybe since Christmas. Just. It just it all needs to be cleared out, and that, that I think is something um, you can do. Um, at the same time, um, I think to, today, you know, you you are ambitious, but although you're ambitious, you may be concerned that you can't get anything done. You know, you've got things you want to do, but 
when you actually apply yourself to these things, uh, it may be, may be surprising to you just how difficult it is. It's not even difficult because there's pressure. It's just there's nothing to apply yourself to. And that might be really irritating. You know, you'd even like a good argument with someone. That at least would be application. You, maybe you can't even get a good argument um, because, it, because, you know, because arguments can sort of help, you know, uh, move things along. You know, we're not in Monty Python land where you can um, pay for an argument. No, and even that you can't pay for an argument. You'd like an argument, but there's no argument to be had. Um, so that might mean in the short term that you have to be a bit uh, patient and also self-sufficient. Um, self-sufficient does not mean insular. It means going out there, doing what you feel is necessary um, and um, just um, keep doing your own thing and just wait for things and wait for something to happen um, and I should also point out that it's important that you are positive today and I'm, there are big temptations to be negative I mean I don't mean negative in terms of thinking about all the bad things that can happen i'm just thinking about negative just thinking like oh well it's not no, no, no point in doing anything it's just not working out it's important to be positive because as soon as you start engaging with someone um you know someone who may seem to be useless <laughs> um there are lots of people to engage with who appear useless um as soon as you start engaging with people, even particularly people who seem useless, you do have the capacity to create change, um, to change the situation around, um, almost to make someone see the world in a completely different way. You can do it. Uh, introducing positive inspirational elements into the situation you can it, it really is possible um if you make the effort um because fundamentally deep down beyond those sort of layers of those superficial layers of negativity and pessimism um scorpio is actually an optimistic heart and that optimistic heart scorpio can be revealed and once people see your vision um, the possibility that things really can be better you know they will be almost transformed um, so Scorpio see what you can do Sagittarius there's a nice triangular um, formation going on involving the fire signs um, you know the moon is in Leo uh, it's a fire sign uh, the sun is in Aries it's a fire sign and the other fire sign is of course you Sagittarius um, okay there are no planets in Sagittarius but then they don't right now but they don't have to be because you're there you're always a Sagittarius and so with the moon the sun and moon both in fire signs Sagittarius uh, I think that you you know you get a real lift uh, you feel that um, things are happening um, that the environment around you uh, is just becoming more sympathetic to who you are and more understanding. You know, Sagittarians can be difficult people for society to take on. Um, you know, particularly if you live in a, a society that's sort of quite staid and respectable and things are supposed to be done in a particular way. You know, you know Sagittarius can be hard to, you know, hard to integrate into that kind of society. Um, but now you're you're able to to take your place um you're actually the kind of person that society needs at the moment and so 
use this energy. Don't be afraid of using this energy. Just, just be yourself. Um, and uh, don't be satisfied with the old way of doing things. You know that the old way of doing things they don't, doesn't work anymore. You can move everyone else on. And your vision is, is going to be important. You, you know, you have a powerful vision. Okay, right now, say today, people might not fully understand this vision, but uh, I think sooner or later they will. Uh, and another thing going on, which was sort of starting yesterday, is that Jupiter, Jupiter's your ruler, uh, remember, Jupiter is at 15 degrees Taurus. You might be thinking, well, 15, de 15 degrees Taurus, so what? Well, 15, de 15 degrees Taurus is exactly 45 degrees from the Aries point. Um, the Aries point represents the world. So Jupiter is connecting with the world. You can connect with the world it's your world um, it's your world just as much as it's anyone else's world and this is a world that you are connected with and you can have a big impact not not just can have a big big impact Sagittarius um, you you should be having a good a big impact uh, you have definitely got something to contribute um, don't be shy, don't apologize. And um, if you feel that things are not going your way, that uh, you're getting a bit of resistance, then it may be a situation where you need to keep pushing. Because I think today uh, is a time when you can actually create a real transformation. Um, you can... Um, Use a part of your personality to make things happen. Uh, okay, in the process, uh, some people might complain. You might cause a bit of offence. But hey, when has Sagittarius ever been concerned about causing offence? Sorry, I'm being flippant. Um, perhaps the means do justify the end. If there's something you want to get done, then you have to get it done. Um, if other people resist, complain, I mean, what can you do about it? Are you going to just do things their way? I, I don't think so. Um, you know, your personality, your creativity, they are, they are the things um, that really matter. And they are the things um, that I think that you should be, um, you should be focusing on. But... In terms of talent and creative input, don't take the view uh, that you're the only person with talent, the only person that can come up with wonderful ideas. That's not true. There is someone out there who, who's got something really important to offer, um, who's, got, who's got some important ideas and you need to listen to them. You need to you need to get their feedback. Um, now you you can't just choose some random person and ask for their creative feedback. You've got to find the right person to get feedback from. So you know we're talking about um, you know that that particular person who you know has has got talents, um, who's got abilities that you can benefit from. And, you know, maybe you need to talk to this person because they may be able to make um, a valuable contrib contribution. Um, you know, it, it, this is not about um, trying to do everything on your own. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to be supportive, but there are going to be a couple of people who are going to be very supportive if you give them the chance. Capricorn. OK, the sun is moving into Aries. Uh, you know, today is is the equinox, and from a from a Capricorn perspective, um, 
this might be a time when you need to ground yourself a bit. Um, you know, I know it sounds exciting, um, the equinox, sun moving into dramatic Aries. Um, but from a perspective of a Capricorn, uh, it may be um, it may be a time when you're not you're not so comfortable about it. I mean, from a northern from a, you know, think about it from a northern hemisphere perspective. Okay, and I know this is from a northern hemisphere perspective. You know, you're born in the winter, and this is the spring. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the spring, but the spring. I don't know from a Capricorn perspective. Um, do you really need there to be a spring? Um, yeah, you enjoy the spring, but when you move to the spring, in, when when Pisces, when the sun moves from Pisces to Aries, you're just feeling, ah, oh, you know, what's the point? Uh, you know, maybe you just pr- prefer to be biding your time, and I think you are prefer you you are, in many respects, in the mood for biding your time, and you know, it's not helped by the fact that the moon is in Leo you know you know as I say you know Leo and Capricorn are two signs that really don't have um, a great deal of connection with each other Um, so Capricorn I think you may feel somewhat out of sorts today Um, just you know, just just things are not right. Things are not in the right place, and you'd prefer to be um, doing things your way um, in your own world without having to bother too much um, about other people. And yeah, and, and matters could be made more difficult by the fact that some people um, have a high opinion of themselves, a high opinion of themselves justified on nothing. Uh, sh- do you pander to this high opinion? Do you give someone praise that you don't believe in? I don't think you do. That's not really the Capricorn approach. Um, so if you're not in a position to give someone praise, maybe you should stay out of their way. Uh, certainly prima donnas and drama queens uh, should be um, should be very much avoided. But, uh, you know, I'm sorry to be negative, um, and I'm not saying that everything is all bad. Um, I, I notice, for example, that there is a conjunction between the Ven- Venus and Saturn. This Venus, this Venus-Saturn conjunction, is not exact. It's 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 a couple of days away. Uh, in fact, no, less than a day away. I mean, it's more, by tomorrow you'll be starting to feel it. Um, you know, Venus is moving through Pisces, a sign of its exaltation. Venus represents a fortunate situation, or perhaps it could represent a person who could do you a lot of good. They are moving your way. Perhaps you can already see them on the horizon coming your way, or perhaps a situation which is fortunate coming your way on the horizon. But I don't think it's going to reach you today. Um, that's more about um, that's more about tomorrow. Um so overall Capricorn I'd probably tell you to bide your time but uh, I understand I need to end on a positive note and I should remind you that you know since May Jupiter has been moving through a very fortunate section uh, uh, of, of your chart you know it's been moving through Taurus uh, it's, it does relate to your abilities and and good luck and you know in the last you know 10 months or so you know you have been getting a clear sense of what you can do and how you can be creative and um, how you can put your talents to good use and today there may be a special reminder of that so once you've cleared everyone out (laughs) and you've got the space you're looking for then maybe today you can start to focus on that Jupiter in Taurus because it's it's very strong Jupiter is at the moment it's at 15 degrees exactly 15 degrees Taurus exactly in the middle of the sign um semi-square the Aries point 
Um, so I think um, once once all the distractions have gone, uh, you may see what is possible. And I, I think um, that it, that represents um, considerable grounds for optimism. Aquarius. So the sun rules Leo and Leo is your opposite sign. So in terms of other people and partners, relationships, it's always it's always important to look at look at the sun from an Aquarian perspective. And um today um Today, the sun moves into um, it moves into Aries. Um, you may therefore notice that some of the people you you, you deal with um, are changing. Um, they are becoming more definite. You know, in the past, recent past, last over the last month, um, they have been may have been unsure of themselves. They may have been. Um, you know, they may have been flaky, they may have been changing their mind, um, they may have been completely unreliable. But with the sun moving into Aries, um, people are more definite. They're clearer about what they want. And um, I think they may be ready to make a decision. So if you have been waiting for someone to make a decision, uh, now might be the time when, you know, when they're ready and able to make that decision. And I think that, uh, you know, if people, other people are more decisive, it helps you, really, doesn't it? It, it allows you to start making um, clearer plans and to start sort of getting things done. Um, and so I think that, that this, this sun, the sun moving into Aries in general just makes things um, a lot easier for yourself. Um, and, you know, while this is going on, you know, the moon is moving through Leo, which is, again, that's your opposite sign. So that's further evidence that you do have to consider um, your social environment. You know, it can be a bit difficult for an Aquarian. I mean, Aquarians like, you know, traditional, uh, traditionally, or should I say stereotypically, um, Aquarians um, are quite independent minded. So the idea of having to consider other people to uh, even rely on other people I'm not suggesting you have to rely on anyone but considering other people certainly can be difficult um, but I think that's something you need to do but you don't have to compromise your independence or anything like that um, it's it's not you know it, it's not that dramatic um, but uh, you know, you, you have a world around you that is clearer in itself. And because it's clearer in itself, you know, you, you're, in a posi- you're in a better position uh, to know what's going on. Um, you know, you're less likely to be, to be let down. Um, still, Aquarius, uh, there's still the capacity to fool yourself. I mean, I know that... Um, the sun has left Pisces, um, you know, Mercury has left Pisces. Pisces is not quite uh, as prominent as it used to be, but we still have, you know, we still have a Venus and Saturn in Pisces. So, that, But it's not just about Venus and Saturn in Pisces. It's just about um, your capacity to fool yourself. Um, it's perhaps about making the wrong decisions um, and getting your priorities wrong. Um, you know, there are lots of pressures going on today. There will be pressures. And you can't give in to all of those pressures. So what you do is you make pro- you, you prioritise them. And there is some danger, Aquarius, that you, you give the wrong priorities to different pressures. You decide that something is really important and you have to act on it. And that thing you act on may be the thing you don't need to act on. Or worse still, it might be something you shouldn't be acting on. And you might find yourself going in a direction um, that is completely unhelpful. Um, So 
I would suggest that you exercise a little bit of caution, uh, that you don't go on wild goose chases. Um, you know, today in general, for, for everyone, um, you know, the moon is not in a great position. Um, it's not applying to anything, to, to any uh, planet immedi immediately. Okay, late in the day in, in, in America, it makes a square to Jupiter. But it's, you know, the moon is about action. And the moon is just not very action orientated right now. So don't give in to temptation. Don't, don't decide that something absolutely has to be done because you might be making a mistake. Indeed, if you come to the decision today that you must do something, that okay, okay, I do understand that some things must be done, they really must be objectively done. But if you decide subjectively that something has to be done for no particular reason and you can't really justify it to another person why something needs to be done, then consider the possibility that somewhere along the line um, you've made a mistake and perhaps you should wait until tomorrow, wait until the situation um, is a bit clearer. Pisces, the sun has moved out of your sign. Um, uh, you could say, well, that's sad. <laughs> it was nice having um, the sun go through Pisces. Um, you know, particularly if you if you're reading these signs from a perspective of your sun sign. I understand some people look at it from a perspective of their ascendant, but if you're looking at these signs from the perspective of your son, you know, it's, it's saying, well, your, birth, your birthday season um, is well and truly over. But uh, I actually think from a Pisces perspective, it's actually quite a good thing now that the sun has, is out of your sign. Um, you know, over the last few days, probably things have been a little complicated. Uh, you know, the sun was on skeet yesterday, Skeet is this, is this really sort of dangerous fixed star connected with shipwrecks and disasters and accidents. Well, the sun is off Skeet. It's in a different sign now. It's 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 um, it's in Aries. Um, it's it's a time when you can refocus. Um, you've you have a fundamental understanding of perhaps of who you are and what you want to achieve. Um, not least because Saturn continues to move through Pisces. Uh, it's been in Pisces for a, a year, I think more than a year. Uh, so yes, you have a certain sense of who you are, but now you have to move to the next stage, don't you? With the sun moving into, into Aries. You know, we, there is a stage approach to looking at the signs of a zodiac. You know, Aries is, you know, the, the first sign, okay, if we, in your case, Pisces is the first sign because that's you. Um, but the next sign, the next stage, okay, you, you know who you are. Now, how are you going to get it? And so perhaps with, sun in, with the sun moving into Aries, that is the question. How are you going to get it? What do you need in order to get it? Um, you might, for example, there may be things you have to buy. There may be a financial dimension. Um, uh, I know that sounds sounds really trivial. You would say if you need something and it's important, you shouldn't have to pay for it. But maybe things you have to buy, there may be um, uh, things you have to sp spend on yourself. Uh, but we have to remember, of course, that sign in Aries is quite an impulsive sign. I'm not talking about impulse purchases. Um, you have to think about your finances and how you are dealing with your finances and. There is there is something that you do you do need to consider there, um, but you know if in the past you know people have been taking advantage of you financially, um, or um, there have been unwarranted financial pressure on you, you know with the sun in Aries you can be very clear uh, no more uh, you can be assertive. Uh, yeah, you know, not just dealing with individuals. I mean there are companies, you know banks. Um, you know, I was just looking at my, I was just looking at my, you know, I don't know, I was looking at my bank. My bank now wants to charge me a $25 a month maintenance fee. 
I, I, that, that's really shocking. You know, I mean, I'm not a Pisces, but, you know, that would be, if I were to be a Pisces, um, then with Sun moving into the Aries, what I would do is I would immediately talk to the bank and make sure that, and deal with this $25 a month maintenance fee. So if you have that kind of situation, Pisces, where someone's trying to charge you an extra fee, um, then, uh, yeah, do something about it. Um, on a um, different note, uh, you know, Jupiter is the ruler of Pisces and Jupiter is at 15 degrees, zero minutes Taurus. Um, that matters. 15 degrees, zero degrees, minutes Taurus, that is 45 degrees from the Aries point. Um, very powerful. Jupiter is really about um, the world out there. Uh, you, Pisces, can make things happen. You, you are in the world. Uh, you are part of the world. It's your world. And you can have an impact. Um, you, know, you don't have to be famous to have an impact. Of course, if you're famous, it's easier to have an impact. But uh, I don't know, if you want to be famous, uh, well, now's your chance. Just get going on it. Um, you can be famous in your community, in your, I don't know, in your family, whatever. You can, you can start to really interact with the world um, and um, make an impression. Uh, okay, it will require a little work. It will require a little bit of organization. But I don't think it's anything that you can't handle. That is the astrology. And now I want to move to the um, I want to move to the I Ching. Um, so, uh, as always, uh, you know, I ask the question, you know, what is Wednesday going to be like for those watching the I Ching segment of this video? Um, so, um, the first hexagram I got was hexagram number 26 the taming power of the great um, we're dealing with huge forces and, and it, it's kind of um, interesting that we've got the taming power of the great on a day you know when the sun is it just moved into aries when um, Jupiter is at exactly 15 degrees Taurus, um, when, you know, in other words, when the sun is, when Jupiter is aspecting by 45 degrees, the Aries point, these, these are massive energies here. Um, and in some respects, what we have to do is tame these massive energies. We have to make use of them and actually use them um, in our own lives. I mean, it's like nuclear energy, isn't it? I mean, you know, the chaotic side of nuclear energy or nuclear power is just atomic bombs. But, you know, uh, but how do you actually use nuclear energy and do something useful with it, like turn it into power? Of course, I don't want to get into arguments about whether or not a nuclear power is a good idea or not. But it's that kind of thing, taming the power of the sun, isn't it? I mean, it's like fusion. Um, uh, that's that's what we're trying. That's what we're trying to do. Um, and it's... Uh, um it's it's can be difficult um but we can't we don't want to destroy this power and i think that in the first instance um with the taming power of a great we do have to restrict ourselves and i think actually this is something that was coming through when i was doing the readings for the for the 12 signs to an extent that we now, we, yeah, but we can feel that the power is there. But right now, do we have the ability to actually use that power constructively? And like today, uh, or for much of today, we may have to um, um, res restrict, artificially restrict our horizons. We know we're able to achieve a great deal. But if we try to achieve our, a great deal right now, we may not be successful because there's just too much power there so a bit of discipline in the first instance uh, might be a good idea um, 
and the top line moves. And so at some stage, um, we're able, we are going to be able to release that, this power. Um, and uh, normally the top line in the I Ching, or very often it's negative, but in this case it's positive. We are able to not just okay we have to tame it to an extent but at a certain point we can really bring our full power out into the open you know it is you know it is the equinox the sun's in aries yes we can we can bring um all this to bear and this takes us to the second hexagram which is hexagram number five now you will notice that i have got a cross here uh, I mean, I put a line, waiting or crossing. Um, Wilhelm translates this as waiting. Uh, and in the Wilhelm translation, uh, you're waiting, you're waiting for something good to happen. Um, but if you actually read the text, he's actually talking about crossing the water. Uh, Greg Winkup does not, he, he talks about doing something, having to do something. He talks about um, you know, crossing the river and perhaps getting wet crossing the river. Uh, so it does seem to me as if just calling it waiting would not necessarily be completely true to what this hexagram is about. And it is about making a crossing, crossing the water. It's something we have to do. Um, in the process, you know, it's not necessarily going to be clean. Uh, we we may have to get our feet in the stream or it may we i don't know we may be up you know who knows we might have to get up to our neck in it but I'm, I'm not talking literal by the way uh so don't go wading into rivers on my behalf um because i won't take responsibility if anything bad happens but uh think about that me- metaphorical river that that has to be crossed there is something that has to be crossed um it's not going to be entirely easy, and I'm not. It's not saying there's no harm, no no damage done. Yeah, uh, your clothes might get wet in the process. Uh, that is that is absolutely possible. So make the crossing, um, because that first you know f- that first hexagram, the taming power of a great, is about controlling your power, um, corralling it a bit. Um, then once you've got that power you've, you're, it's under control you understand it and perhaps it's all about understanding what it means for the sun move, be moving into Aries then you are in the position to make the crossing to make um, make the transition so now I'm going back to the astrology and I want to talk about the um, I want to talk about the Aries point um, the Aries point we all have an Aries point. Um, it's just in our chart. Um, um, so, um, to, illust- uh, to illustrate um, an Aries point, here's my chart, for example. Um, I'm not going to really talk about my chart. But I have an Aries point. There's my Aries point. There it is. Zero degrees Aries. See, we've all got an Aries point. Um, and so when you look at a chart, do look at the Aries point. And so how do you look at it? I'm not saying you look at it in terms of houses. You can look at it in the house. You can say, well, you've got the Aries point in the 12th house, but that's not really what I suggest you do with the Aries point. So the Aries point represents you and the world, how you relate to the world. It relates to the public. You know, there are these points in ast- in astrology which are connected, which are about connections. And I'm looking at this perspective, particularly from the German schools of astrology, um, that of Alfred Witter and the Uranian system and um, Ebertin. I mean, Ebertin was, Reinhold Ebertin, I don't know if you've come across him, but he wrote his combination of stellar influences. I mean, it was, I don't know, it was... A, a bit of a sanitized version of Vita. Um, v- Ebertin didn't really seem to seem to look at the Aries point, but I think that's a shame. Um, so, so there are these points. The ascendant is, you know, how we deal with people. Uh, 
the node uh, is about our connections uh, with perhaps our community. So you could be ascendant is about perhaps one to one. The node is about how we perhaps deal with a broader co- uh, group of pe- people. I mean, maybe our community. Uh, I suppose it could be our family, perhaps our friends. Then you move out to the Aries point, and that's like the world at large, uh, how the world at large occurs to us. Um, And the Aries point is going to be particularly important in terms of famous people. And what we're looking for is aspects to the Aries point. And when I say aspects to the Aries point, I mean conjunctions. So if there's my chart, zero degrees Aries, do I have anything at zero degrees Libra? Right. So if I were to have a planet at zero degrees Libra, that planet would be important in terms of how I deal with the world at large. So there's no planet at zero degrees zero Libra. Then the squares. So in other words, the cardinal points, zero degrees Aries. Zero, if, so if you've got any planet at zero degrees Aries, zero degrees Libra, zero degrees um, Cancer, zero degrees Capricorn, then that becomes important. So what about orb? Well, I would have said... I would use an orb of approximately one degree. So anything, so for air, if you've got to have a planet on the Aries, exactly conjunct the Aries point, I'd say anything between 29 Pisces and one degree Aries. You might go up a little further, one and a half degrees, but no more than one and a half degrees. So 28 and a half Pisces to say one and a half degrees Libra, but don't go any more than that. I probably one degree is 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 better. But not just the conjunctions, the oppositions and the squares. Also, the 45 degree aspects, semi-squares and sesquiquadrates. Now, you don't have to work that out because it's easy. If you've got a planet of 15 fixed, then it's going to be semi-square or sesquiquadrate, the Aries points. If you've got any planet of 15 fixed, 15 Taurus, 15 Leo, 15 Aquarius, um, 15... um, what have I missed? 15, Scorp- 15 Taurus, 15 Leo, 15 Scorpio, or 15 Aquarius. It is, 40, it is in a 45-degree series aspect to the Aries point. Um, and you might also want to look at every Aries point hitting midpoints. Um, and I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to look at, uh, I'm going to just look at some examples. I'm going to very quickly um, go through a lot of charts Okay, not that many charts. Um, okay, let's start off with uh, Emmanuel Macron, uh, the president of France. Um, he, you know, he became president at a very young age. I think he was, um, am I right in saying he was 39 when he was elected? Uh, things happened quickly. Uh, um you know, I know that you know we've not, we're now seeing that Macron is pretty crazy, but you know, he, clearly he's um, a very clever, talented man, uh, very sure of himself, over sure of himself, um, but a man who has had a public impact, and he has got a huge amount of planets, relatively speaking, close to the Aries point. So. With Macron, there is his Aries point. Okay, in fact, we see Charon. I'm not really going to look at Charon, but he has got, if you're interested, he's got Charon. Sorry, not Charon. I've got that wrong. That's zero degrees Taurus. So let's start again. Um, sorry, there is Charon. Forget that. Um, so there's the Aries point. There is Macron's Aries point. So we're looking at, uh, there's nothing, he hasn't, doesn't have any conjunctions to his Aries point. He doesn't have any oppositions to his Aries point. What about squares? You see, he has got Jupiter square his Aries point. So we can therefore say that he has Jupiter on his Aries point. Uh, Remember, Macron is often called Jupiter. I mean, Jupiter is prominent because it's, it's in Cancer. It's in the sign of its exaltation. And it is square his Aries point. If we use a one and a half degree orb, and, and I think that's okay. Don't go, don't go all an orb of higher than one and a half degrees. So he's got Jupiter on the Aries point. Here is someone larger than life person, a person who is arrogant, and who projects his arrogance to the wider public. And so I think we can we can definitely see that. 
then we go to the op then we go to zero degrees capricorn and we can see that he's got a sun mercury conjunction at um 2925 sagittarius so well within 1 degree of his of his Air, of his aries point he was his he was born just before the sun moved into capricorn his mercury really close so he's got sun and mercury on on the aries point so here is a person who is able to communicate it's opposition jupiter um and so that sun jupiter opposition mercury jupiter opposition clearly someone who's got um who can communicate very well to the public and has a high opinion of himself and it's reflected on the public who makes mistakes and it's reflected on the public he's recently made i think quite a big mistake for example um when he talked about you know he said in public um that you know france is considering sending troops to ukraine um this got an immediate uh, negative response and that was his perhaps his sun conjunct mercury you know sun conjunct mercury mercury is the way he thinks and the sun is sort of overwhelming his thought processes okay i know his mercury it's a um is it a kazemi it's um 15 that's not kazemi i don't think no but uh, not quite um but that uh that overwhelming his thought process something upset him he read something he saw something and he immediately responded by saying oh we could front hard is going to send its troops to ukraine and it, it was very public uh, so he kind of had a public humiliation but it's all in public um and it's that's not that's not all he has got the moon at 1429 taurus in other words f- close to 15 fixed and so there is the, um so the moon is 45 degrees from his aries point and it's opposition uranus <laughs> uranus is at 15 fixed i.e. 1450 taurus so that's uh, f- 135 degrees from the aries point um so that moon opposition uranus on the aries point um really strong really impulsive again i think we saw his impulsiveness in terms of um you know in terms of him as him as french president saying things not thinking it through um and having a very high opinion of himself uh, so he and he in fact is someone who has got i think five planets um aspecting the aries point um sun mercury jupiter moon uranus might be a bit dangerous for the world but you know here is someone who became president of france at the age of 39 who came from nowhere so he was just naturally configured to dealing with the public and becoming a public figure um and we can see his arrogance and his impulsiveness and i think his dangerousness So that's Emmanuel Macron and I think Emmanuel Macron's horoscope really does illustrate how um the Aries point can work. Uh, another person who's got some stuff on the Aries point is um is Stalin. Um now Stalin um has Venus quite close to his Aries point. and you might be thinking well how does that how does that work um you know stalin has this sort of reputation of being a, a monster um as someone who's responsible for millions of deaths but he was a successful politician he was a successful soviet leader um how did he do it uh he must have had some charisma somewhere along the line people must have liked him or liked to have him around um you know when he died um i think that people in the soviet union were genuinely upset i know you could say well they had to cry or whatever because um there's a, there's a, there's a story that uh, you know he died on march the 5th 1953 uh, I, that was the same day that uh, the composer Prokop- prokofiev died i think he died on march the 5th and apparently that's a bad day if you're rushing to die on the same day as stalin because um difficult to arrange a funeral apparently prokofiev for his funeral they couldn't get any flowers because every flower in the soviet union had gone for stalin's um had gone for stalin's funeral but 
having Venus on the Aries point or close to the Aries point um, helps him become popular. Uh, I would have I would have said, but there's something else going on in Stalin's chart with the Aries point, um, which is more concordant with uh, with his image. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I am going to just show you the um, the hypothetical planets. You know, I don't with hypothetical planets you should not use hypothetical planets just for the sake of it. I think you really need to use really tight orbs. So. Here is Stalin's Hades. Hades is a planet of death, criminality, destruction. Uh, but, you know, death and criminality is very much associated with Hades. Uh, and, and his Hades is exactly on uh, at 15 degrees fixed. fixed. So 15 degrees for Aquarius is exactly 45 degrees from the Aries point. So this is what he brings in a public sense, what he brings as a politician, and what he brings is death. And as a result of Stalin's rule, it's true, millions and millions of people died. Um, and there is there is Hades hitting his Aries point. And so he's able to bring the energies of that, this hypothetical planet Aries and bring it to bear um, in terms of, of, his, of his rule and his public position. Um, so I think that, uh, I think that, that uh, works very well. Um, now, there is this question of midpoints to consider. Um, you, you know, midpoints... Um, I do think that midpoint aspects of the Aries point are are important, and so when we think of Joseph Stalin, I suppose we also have to start thinking about about Hitler, don't we? Um, so what about Hitler's chart? What about Hitler's Aries point? Um, so here's Hitler's chart, um, April twentieth, eighteen eighty nine. I've gone for six thirty p.m. Uh, we don't need to see all the hypotheticals, so I'll get rid of those. Uh, you know, you, you don't use hypotheticals unless you really have to, unless you're really close or, you know, it just clutters the chart up. Uh, so let's remove the hypotheticals. So Hitler had a square aspect between Mars and Saturn. Uh, there you can see um, Saturn at 13 Leo and Mars at 16 23 Taurus. Um, so that's that's straightforward, simple astrology. Mars and Saturn square is all about death. I mean, that's, you know, in his case, I mean, lots of people have Mars, Saturn squares and they do useful things with it. But Mars and Saturn, um, you know, Mars in Taurus square, Saturn in Leo, there's Saturn in the tenth house, the the leader square Mars, and so he was able to bring a lot of death on in the world, and so that fits with that Mars Saturn square. But then we think, okay, what about the Mars Saturn midpoint? Um, where is the Mars Saturn midpoint? Well, you can see that um, the Mars Saturn midpoint, uh, if we look at um, Hitler's midpoint, well, the exact midpoint, the exact Mars-Saturn midpoint is at, um, I'll tell you, it's, it is at 29 degrees and 55 minutes Gemini. In other words, five minutes off um, zero degrees Cancer. So in other words, his midpoint is square the Aries point. And traditionally, we would say that Mars and Saturn are on each other's anticia. And anticia is a reflection. So if you were to reflect Saturn through zero degrees Cancer, it would be reflected onto the position of Mars. If you were to reflect Mars on through the anticia, it would be reflected onto the position of Saturn. Um, so having Mar Aries on the Mars-Saturn midpoint is is you know is absolutely devastating signature of someone who is able to inflict a huge amount of death on 
the general public, the world at large. And so um, I, I think this is unambiguous. This is clear, the clearly clear astrological symbolism um, at work. Um, and there is another person who has got Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint. Um, it's not just it's not just uh, Hitler. It is uh, Oppenheimer. Um, so this is Oppenheimer's chart. You know, I think it's just been just been a film of him, hasn't there? So Oppenheimer is one of the people responsible um, for the atomic bomb. He led um, what did he 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 led the what did they call it the Manhattan Project? Is that right? Um, uh, so he was considered by some to be the father of the atomic bomb, and. At the very least, a lot of people were killed in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and there is this potential for a lot of people to be killed in the future. And Oppenheimer, you know, has this sort of connection with death in terms of the way he presents himself. Um, you know, he remember, you know, all his famous quotations about from the Bhagavad Gita, I have become, um, you know... Uh, I've become death, the destroyer of worlds and all of that. And although I think death was a mistranslation, I think in Sanskrit it should have been time. But um, anyway, um, there's his Mars Saturn square. Now you can see that his Mars Saturn square is incredibly wide. Uh, now normally for a square, one should have a five degree orb. Uh, there we've got a sort of an an eight degree over eight degrees and you could say well hold on eight degree orb that's not that's not really a square uh, it's just it's just simply too wide um but then we have to ask well where exactly is the precise um mars saturn midpoint um and so in his case uh the mars saturn midpoint is at uh in Oppenheimer's chart, the midpoint is at, is at zero degrees 42 Aries. So that's the Aries point. And so his Mars-Saturn square is exactly, is well, not exactly, it's 42 degrees off. It's nothing like as close as, as Hitler, where it was only a five-minute orb. Um, but it's good enough. So he has Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint, and that's how he presents himself to the public. You know, not just in terms of creating the atomic bomb or being the father of the atomic bomb, but also in terms of his public utterances and his seriousness and quoting the Bhagavad Gita about the significance of um, of the atomic bomb. So um, I, I do think that uh, Robert Oppenheimer is a very good example of you know why. Um, why we should use um, the why we should use the the Aries point. There are a couple of other people who've got um, uh, Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint. It's not just Hitler and Robert Oppenheimer. Um, Victoria Newland, for example, she was uh, acting head, deputy head of uh, secretary. What's it? Uh, Head act, 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 well, she was acting deputy um, head of the State Department. Um, what was she? Uh, head of political affairs, or something. Anyway, she's retired. But Victoria Newland um, has Aries hitting the. Um, the so there's her her Mars Saturn midpoint. So in, in her case, her Mars Saturn midpoint is it, is at approximately fifteen degrees Scorpio. Uh, so she had um, Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint, and you know she was very much involved with the revolt in Ukraine. And uh, in in twenty fourteen, she actively encouraged it. She's been actively encouraging America's proxy war in the Ukraine. Uh, in fact, I think in many ways she may have been a leading light in encouraging it. And as a result of her. Uh, neocons and people like that actively pushing this war um, hundreds of thousands of people have died in Ukraine most of them Ukrainians um, and so she is in a way bringing to bear um, that uh, Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint um, 
Uh, so uh, that that illustrates that. Um, Vladimir Zelensky, by the way, he also has Aries um, on the Mars Saturn midpoint. Um, so he's the president of Ukraine, and um, he abandoned peace talks in Istanbul. And you know he's you know he's he's been part of this war that has led to you know hundreds of thousands of people dying. Um, so you know Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint. If you become a public figure, you have to you know you can cause a lot of damage um, if you've got Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint. Um, uh, and then, I mean, again, this is a chart I've looked at before. Um, now, Victoria Newland also has areas on the Venus Jupiter midpoint. Uh, I should point out now. This now, and I should, while we're on this subject, we should also talk about Princess Diana, born on the same day as Victoria Newland. Um, Victoria, Princess Diana, like Victoria Newland, had Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint. Also, like um, Victoria Newland, uh, Princess Diana had Aries on the Venus Jupiter midpoint. Um, so, I kind of more want to talk about the Venus Jupiter midpoint rather than the Mars Saturn midpoint. I think the Mars Saturn midpoint is self explanatory. Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint is talking about her death, her death on October, the, August the 31st, 1990, 1997. In a way, it was a very public death, the public. Um, so she wasn't causing death. She wasn't being part of um, uh, some massive world drama where hundreds of thousands, millions of people even are dying. Um, it's just about her own death, um, dying in the tunnel. Um, in public, public funeral, she's known now for her death as well as her life. Um, people always make that association, and yes, she ha does have her, her, so Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint. You see her Mars and her Saturn, uh, so she's got Aries. It's good, so her mid Mars Saturn midpoint, fifteen Scorpio, and so that is sesquiquadrate one hundred thirty-five degrees from her Aries point, and also um, her Venus Jupiter midpoint. See, there's her Venus, there's her Jupiter. And the midpoint is zero degrees Aries. So that gives us a contrast. So she has Aries on the Venus-Jupiter midpoint. Um, this is something very fortunate. She really, she, she is able to capture the public mood and the public love her, uh, or at least some of the public love her. Um, um, you know, when she died... There was a, you know, there was there was split. There, there were, you know, I remember being in Britain, England, Britain when she was died. There were two views. Some people just thought, so what? <laughs> we're just bemused by the whole thing. Other people, for other people, it was a real tragedy. Um, but a great chunk of the public thought she was wonderful, and she had Aries on the, the Aries con, on the Venus Jupiter midpoint. I uh, just want to see if Vitus says anything useful um, about Aries on the Venus Jupiter midpoint. Um, um, so Vita would say um, Aries on the Venus Jupiter midpoint loves happiness, luck and joy in the general public, gorgeous celebrations and jewelry. Well, you can see the the pleasantness, luck and joy, the general public. And I suppose you think of a royal wedding, people, you know, in 1980, was it 82? Or was it one? I think it was 81. Um, yeah, it was 81, the royal wedding. You know, people, that that was her, Aries on the Venus-Jupiter midpoint. But her Venus-Jupiter midpoint is right on her Mars-Saturn midpoint. So it was um, life and death um, so close together with... Um, with um, Princess Diana. Um, I think um, that is it. I don't think I'm. I, I don't think I'm going to say anything else. Uh, I mean, you could look at another. Look at a couple of other charts. I mean, um, Napoleon. I mean, we talked about Macron. So Napoleon. Um, Macron wants to be Napoleon, isn't that right? His people call him the little Napoleon. Uh, Napoleon had this great, obviously had this massive empire, uh, created this massive empire. And there's Napoleon's Jupiter, uh, Jupiter at uh, 
15 degrees Scorpio, exactly sesquic 15, just one minute out um, from the, the sesqui quadrate um, with um, the Aries point. So, yeah, I mean, Napoleon was a larger than life person because he had Jupiter on the Aries point. OK, a lot of people have Jupiter on the Aries point. Um, and I suppose you also need the opportunity. But as soon as you become a famous person in the public eye, uh, you know, as soon as you become, I don't know, a successful soldier or whatever, and you, you do start to have political influence, and you then have Jupiter hitting the Aries point, then this that Jupiter may start to become um, super, super prominent. Um, so, you know, we can go on, but uh, I think you get the point um, that the Aries point uh, really is important. So when you when you're doing a chart, Look at the zero degrees Aries and look at all the zero degrees Aries, zero degrees Libra, zero degrees um, Cancer, zero degrees um, Capricorn. And anything within one and a half degrees, one degree is, is important. It's on the Aries point. And do the same with the... Um, with 15, the 15 of the fixed signs, 15 Taurus, 15 Scorpio, 15... Sorry, 15 Taurus... 15 Leo, 15 Scorpio, 15 Aquarius. So just so, to have a look. Have a look at your own chart. Have a look at other people's charts. See if there are any planets on the Aries point. You don't have to worry about the midpoints at the moment. Um, but that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, but just 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 consider it. Because uh, I think it might give um, a new depth to your astrology. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for... Uh, um, thank you for listening. Um, I hope you found that useful. If you enjoyed this video, um, I would be grateful if you were to like it. Um, uh, if you're not subscribed, of course, I'd be very grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thanks again for listening to me and hearing me out. And I will talk to you again tomorrow.